everyone. Thank you for coming out. Um, we picked an optimal sunlight time, I think. Um, my name is Marianne. Well, I am the executive director of the Alliance for a Better Utah. We're a multi-issue advocacy organization, promotes honest political debate through communications resources, original commentary, and community action. We're here today to celebrate citizen support for government, for government transparency, and to tell the U.S. governors that are meeting just around the corner that we will hold the except for the mic. As we witness this past spring, the people of Utah are not going to stand for secrecy. The groundswell of protests demanding the immediate of HB 477 was unprecedented. Maybe it's built in for pause, for dramatic <laughs> emphasis. That success has emboldened the citizens of this great state to stand up and demand that our elected officials be held to a higher standard, a standard that not only encourages openness and transparency, but demands it. And ABU is going to be watching, along with these great people behind us, and working for openness and accountability from every one of our elected leaders. During the HB 477 repeal efforts, Utah gained the attention of the Sunlight Foundation. They bring a national perspective to our local efforts. Utahns are not alone in the fight for open government. This is a rallying cry that we hear across the nation. And what better time to rally on this particular issue than as Utah is hosting the Governor's Association Conference so now I would like to turn it over to our co-host and welcome the Sunlight Foundation, Gabriella Schneider, the Communications Director. Thank you so much, Marianne. And thank you all for coming out today. And thank you to the sun for shining down on us. Good morning. How, how, are, how are all of you? Woo. All right, let's get the energy up. All right. My name is Gabriella Schneider, and I am the Communications Director at the Sunlight Foundation. Sunlight is a five-year-old, nonpartisan nonprofit based in Washington, D.C. Our mission is to use the Internet to help open up our government. We take our inspiration from Justice Brandeis' adage, sunlight is said to be the best of disinfectants. At the Sunlight Foundation, which you can learn more about at sunlightfoundation.com, we advocate for new public policies to make government transparent and accountable. We build web tools that enable easy access to public information. We train journalists on how to watchdog Washington. We organize for 21st century laws to make public information available online and in real time. Really, in the internet age, there's no reason you should go and have to file for a paper document. We are here this morning to deliver an open letter to the nation's governors, as Marianne said, as the National Governors Association is kicking off their annual meeting right around the corner. We started this petition drive in the spring when we observed a very disturbing trend proliferating across the states to rescind long-standing freedom of information laws and practices. In Maine, for example, Governor Paul LePage exempted his business advisory committee from the state's freedom of information law, even though he had said his would be the most transparent administration in Maine. He has since put this uh, committee on hold. In Florida, Governor Rick Scott implemented a policy requiring the public to pay to access public documents. That kind of negates the whole notion of public, don't you think? And get this, Tennessee's Governor Bill Haslin exempted himself from disclosure laws that would have him reveal his fortunes, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean his finances. In Washington State, Governor Chris Gregory set an executive privilege that kept her from public records requests and established that to ask her to fulfill such requests would negate a separation of powers. I don't have to tell you about the egregious rollback of Utah's grandma law. It was Governor Herbert and Utah and Utah State Legislature's action to cast a shadow on the public's right to know and the subsequent public outrage that inspired us at the Sunlight Foundation in Washington, D.C. to take action to empower Americans across the country to demand accountability. Our elected officials cannot get away with using transparency on the campaign trail to gain dr trust and votes. Governor Herbert and all U.S. governors, they have to wake up to the fact that citizens of Utah and citizens of this great country won't accept mere promises about transparency without a sincere commitment to walk the walk. We heard your voices and we, we saw your successful mobilization to take back your right to know and what your pub, to know what your public officials are doing. 
And I'm so inspired by all of this because we really are making progress. And to give you an update on that progress and the work that's happening right here in Utah, I'm so pleased to introduce to you Linda Peterson of the Utah Foundation for Open Government. Before I turn it over to Linda, just a few logistical notes. We're going to have a few speakers, and I will introduce each one, and then there will be time for Q&A. So without further ado, Linda. Thank you. On March the 2nd of this year, the majority party here in Utah, the Republican Party, introduced legislation that we know as HB 477, which would, ha would have decimated GRAMA, the Government Record Access Management Act, our open records law. Within two days, it became law, effective immediately. In addition to this, there was the unprecedented move by the the majority party where every single member of that party sponsored that legislation. Even though this legislation was rushed through at the final moment, party leadership told the media that that was because it was the end of the legislative session and things had piled up as they always do at the end of the legislature. It only came out later that there had been nine drafts of this particular legislation over several months. At that time, on that Friday, President of the Senate, Michael Waddup, said, Day, it will complicate matters if it has a chance to fester. It did a whole lot more than fester, even though they passed it that day. By Monday, it had erupted into a firestorm. A firestorm that was media-informed not media driven as some of the leadership claims. Within days, citizens came out of the woodwork to organize. By Tuesday, Bob Agard had organized a rally on Capitol Hill. By Thursday, another group had. Within a, four, a few short days, some of the people here today, two of them, Nancy Lord and Jenna Lee Tobias, had filed a citizen's referendum petition, all against House Bill 477. On that particular Monday, Governor Herbert had not yet weighed in on the issue. He, uh, that morning, the first hour of business, his phone system was overloaded by 600 phone calls in an hour on that subject. At that time, Go Governor Herbert, as it turned out, hesitated. At that time, we were hoping it was more than a hesitation. He talked with leadership and got them to recall the bill, which they then re-released with a, an effective date of July 1st. And then Governor Herbert, much to our disappointment, went ahead and signed it. The public furore around the state was unbelievable. The media reported on that public furore and also on subsequent issues. Again, the leadership claimed that the media was fueling this fire. The citizens were fueling this fire. Citizens from trade union, unionists to environmentalists to community activists to conservative Republicans all joined, all joined hands in an unprecedented wave against this. Legislators were inundated in their emails, their official emails, their personal emails, their trips to the grocery store, their trips to church, and one legislat legislator couldn't even hide out at a Pinewood Derby. Eventually, the pressure, I believe, got to them. Some saw reason, some buckled to political pressure, and a special session was held. And on March 25th, House Bill 477 was repealed. At, at that time, Governor Herbert, again doing a bit of a backtrack, uh, talked about how now it was time for debate, now it was time to think about things. Now it was time to form a working group to repeal and replace House Bill 477. I was a member of that working group along with uh, Representative Brian King who will speak to you here today. And we met over several weeks and many hours. There were 25 people on that group, a rather unwieldy group, all handpicked by the legislative leadership but from many walks of life. As we met and as we broke out in study sessions, we worked hard. And we came back, and you know what our was? Grandma ain't broke, don't fix her. Yeah. 
Yes, there are recommendations that will go to the governor and to the legislature, and those recommendations fine-tune some language to, to tighten it up uh, so it, it won't have core challenges. It addresses trying to get more public information on the Internet, online, where citizens can access it. It recommends an ombudsman. It recommends many positive changes. There's very little there that attacks grandma. Legislators at the beginning of the HB 477 debacle, even John Dougal, who sponsored it, talked about concern about constituent emails and their privacy. That was heavily addressed, and some suggestions were made to encourage constituents to be aware that they would be that their information could be in emails publicly accessible. But other than that, there were very little changes made. Text messages, interesting enough, uh, Senator Kurt Bramble, who was a big proponent of House Bill 477, the very last day of the working group in reference to text messages says, why don't we leave grandma alone? Overwhelmingly, that seemed to be the consensus once the group, many of whom legislators had never read grandma, that this was a very well thought out law that was perfectly fine to go forward into the 21st century. With this letter today that we will, along with the Sunlight Foundation, will deliver to the Governor's Association, we reiterate that statement. No more. Bring our work out into the sunlight and let, you, let us judge you for ourselves. So now we're going to hear from Sherilyn Benyon, who is representing the Utah League of Women Voters. Thank you. The League of Women Voters has an almost century-long record of supporting open government. And so I'm happy to add my voice to those of us who are here to advance that cause. One of the good things that came out of the repeal of HB 477, as Linda has pointed out, was the formation of the working group to examine it and suggest changes, and the realization that there really wasn't any significant problem with grandma as it now stands. As one of the legislators said, maybe just a little tweaking is needed. Well, it's the tweaking that I want to make sure we are aware of and concerned about. I just returned from a trip to Cedar City, and among the things that we accomplished there was a hike in Cedar Breaks. And it occurred to me as I walked in the woods and saw the pine cones that had been pulled apart and pecked apart by the birds and animals there that this was actually a pretty good analogy to what happens and will undoubtedly continue to happen with grandma as little pieces of legislation are proposed and enacted that peck away at our grandma guarantees until what's left is only a vestige of what we started out with. There are, in fact, as I have watched the working group and its subcommittees, I have been amazed at the dedication and devotion of these citizens who came together and spent hours of their time and energy without compensation to examine this law. I would just like to point out a couple of things among their recommendations that are examples of the problems that may arise and the reasons why we need to continue to watch and be aware of what is going on with grandma. One was the suggestion involving the costs of 
finding information and delivering it that would have to be paid for by the citizens. And the recommendation is that these costs be the actual costs, which would include full employee labor costs, including employee benefits, plus overhead and administrative costs. Now, if you think about that for a minute, you can see that this, these costs could be prohibitive for citizens and nonprofit groups that may be trying to get the government information to which they are entitled. The other example that I wanted to mention is kind of a good news, bad news recommendation. The committee recommended that the intent language in GRAMA be maintained. The decision must come down on the side of the public, so the information must be released. And not only did the committee recommend that this be retained, but that there would be similar language in portions of GRAMA so that it would be clear throughout the law that this would be the case. However, the bad news part of this is that for certain kinds of records, there would be a different test. And when a citizen wanted access, that citizen would have to show by a preponderance of the evidence in some cases or by clear and convincing evidence in other cases that the interest favoring access outweighed the interest favoring privacy. Now this sounds kind of innocuous maybe, but these are legal standards that are that put a much heavier burden on citizens to prove that access is justified. So this is the kind of thing that I think we need to be aware of. We need to keep our eyes open and not think that the fight is won. And I suppose what I'm really asking here for is the maintenance of eternal vigilance. Thank you. Thank you for those inspiring words, Cheryl. And now we're going to hear a bit more from Representative Brian King. And when he's done speaking, I'll come back and take any questions you might have. Well, first of all, I want to um, thank those who are putting on this press conference for inviting me to this. This is a great opportunity to discuss something of great importance. And, in the state of Utah and across the country, which is access to public records. Um, I also want to acknowledge here with me today uh, my colleague, Representative Rebecca chavez Hauk, who is, serves with me in the House of Representatives. Um, <laughs> Representative chavez, chavez Hauk and I have uh, remarked repeatedly since the end of the last session that the best no votes we have cast in a very long time were the no votes we cast on HB 477. This, uh, th this misbegotten attempt to restrict access to government records. It's, it was a very interesting process to go through to have HB 477 come before us in, in the legislature. The process by which it was considered in, in committee and on the floor of the House was very accelerated. It was very abbreviated. There wasn't much opportunity provided, and it was designed that there not be much opportunity provided to either legislators or the public to weigh in on the merits or lack of merits of that bill. And uh, the backlash, as has been repeated here, uh, was very swift and immediate and significant, and we were heartened by that in the, uh, those of us in the legislature who voted against HB 477. And it was just remarkable to see what a quick turnaround there was in overwhelming support for that bill initially when it was presented. I think there were only 12, 10 or 12 votes in the House against it, and uh, maybe four or five in the Senate against it, to about three weeks later when we met in our repeal session and uh, repealed that bill by overwhelming margins with the exception of uh, just two or three votes in, in the entire legislature that bill was repealed. And it was because of the pressure and the outcry from the public. And I appreciate that. After that, I had the opportunity to be involved in the Grandma Working Group, as uh, Linda mentioned. 
and the difference between the procedure that we went through in the legislature when we considered the bill and what we went through in the grandma working group was was really stark we heard many individuals talk about uh, the importance of grandma how it could be improved the importance of maintaining uh, access to government records and what came out of that grandma working group as Linda indicated was some great ideas um, things such as an ombudsman training of requesters and responders to ensure that there would be more prompt and accurate hey, hey, hey. and appropriate disclosure of government records upon request clarification of the rec of the uh, relationship between the intent language in the statute and the specifics of the statute in a way that favors disclosure of government records and the need to educate the public about how written communications that they make to their legislators will uh, be subject to being disclosed as a public record. Those are all important things and they all move in the direction of uh, not restricting access to public records to any degree but rather increasing the likelihood that the public has an opportunity to see exactly what's happening in government function whether it's in the legislature or at the county or uh, municipal or local level. Um, there have been a lot of analogies here today that we hear. The whole idea of the Sunlight Foundation is a wonderful analogy and uh, we heard another one from Sherilyn, but I, I thought of an analogy uh, coming over today that I wanted to share with you. Um, it's often, uh, I've heard that the best advice you can give a high school uh, boy who's going out on a date is to imagine that in the entire time that you're on your date, your date's mother is with you. <laughs> and let that guide your behavior. Well, the, the way that that would work for me as a public official is that in all my dealings, uh, on the public's business, imagine at my side at all times a constituent. And that's right. That is a great uh, guide for me in thinking about how I should conduct myself as a legislator, what I should be saying to people, what I shouldn't be saying to people. Now, obviously, that's not workable. It's not feasible for me to have a constituent at my side at all times. But it is uh, the next best substitute is to have a strong, invigorated grandma statute that ensures that we as public officials know that any documents that we create or that are sent to us uh, will, will be available for access by the public upon their request. That's important and I appreciate the efforts of the Sunlight Foundation and those who fought hard to make sure that HB 477 was repealed. Thank you. Before I hand things over to my esteemed colleague, Lauren Ellen McCann, who is our online organizer at the Sunlight Foundation, she's going to take us through the petition delivery. Anything specific that you're bringing up to the National Governors Association? So the, the question was, is there anything specific that we are bringing up to the National Governors Association? The specific message to the National Governors Association and to the governors of the United States is that we're watching you and you and you can't think that you can hide information especially public information from this country's citizens the way to rebuild trust there's so much apathy about the US Congress at least there's the way to rebuild trust is to do everything out in the open and so what we're doing is delivering a letter today signed by thousands of Americans across the country saying we want transparency and we're not going to take no for an answer and by the way if there's any bill that comes to the floor that might repeal, repeal long-standing freedom of information laws you have the right to veto that so with that i'm going to pass things on to lauren ellen mccann and take it away <laughs> So we've been talking a lot. I'm not as tall as everybody else, I'm sorry. We've been talking a lot of, with the word letter. I'm holding in my hand over 100 USBs because this is kind of what letters look like nowadays. They're online, they're accessible, you can search this and we can share it around really easily. So when we say we're delivering letters, we mean that we're delivering these USBs which are neatly packaged with the letter and the thousands of signatures that we got on this open letter to governors that was inspired by the actions here in Utah. Now we have tried several times to get in touch we actually made contact with the National Governors Association about delivering these letters, and they told us very nicely that we could email them to each of the offices, which we will do. We're going to deliver these letters. And so I want to kind of set some expectations, because we're going to go over there with a stack of USB cards and stand in the hall of the Grand America Hotel and ask very nicely if we could go in and talk with everybody. You know, there's a good chance that they're going to say, no thanks, 
and to which we'll say, great, because we're going to drop these in the mail tomorrow, and they're getting into those offices. The point is that we gather here today and that we show our presence offline for the for the values that we hold that apply as much to online as they do to our homes, as they do to the little constituents sitting on the shoulder of our elected representatives. So regardless of what happens today and what we got out of it, the important thing is that the people in Utah are setting a standard for the rest of the country. And when we look out, man, people, you might, you might feel a certain way about the progress, about the need for vigilance, but there are other states in this union that need leaders like you to step up and fight. These are easy issues to get. And if we keep making that message, we can get them to sign the pledges later. Later, We need to get the constituents to be saying this now. So I hope you'll walk over with us. We're going to do this very friendly, but thank you for coming. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. About two weeks ago. Yes, you were. Yes, and we asked if we could deliver uh, an open letter petition to correct. governors of the United States. Correct. On government transparency. That's correct. And we so, were told, and you were told no. Right. And here you are. And so here we we're are. going to ask you Just to leave. Just time for a little bit of openness. And all we have are USB drives with right. signatures from thousands of citizens across the country who are concerned about a rollback of transparency. You are welcome to send those to governors' offices directly. This is not the forum to distribute any kind of information, and so we would ask you to leave. Okay, well, okay. We, we just thought there might be a change of heart since we do there have citizens is no. right here from Utah who, who successfully got Governor Herbert to change his face on repealing grandma. So and we appreciate that. The governor wouldn't want to come out for the, a moment there are, The governor is not available. He okay. isn't even on premise. Okay, okay. So. well, thank you so much right. for your time. Thank, thank you. you.